land look who we have here today we have jessica wellington who's been on the clint eastwood movie the mule and she's on the brand new season of frankie and grace let's chop it up with your friend and mine the amazingly great human being of jessica wellington hi hello <laughs> thank you so much for having me oh my gosh i'm so excited to have you jessica we're Hold both it's later over there, right? Where are you at? I'm in LA. Okay, I'm clear over in Vegas. Okay, but you still have no excuse to look this good so early. I'm really jealous. <laughs> Wait until two o'clock, it goes south. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about Jessica Wellington growing up in North Carolina, all the way famous in Hollywood. I wanna hear this story, Jessica. Well, I definitely don't consider myself famous yet, but thank you. That's very sweet. Uh, maybe one day that would be nice. Yes. Um, I don't know. I, it's definitely different. I know that, you know, like you said, you were a, a veteran. I was, I'm a veteran. I went in the Air Force, and I put in that I wanted to stay everywhere, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, you know, all right there. And they, <laughs> sent me to, they sent me to England. So that was the best thing they could have done for me, honestly, uh, or I never would have left. <laughs> <laughs> I told them I wanted to be anywhere in the middle of Germany. And that turns out to be Nebraska of Germany. <laughs> so you have to put the exact opposite of what you want. And yeah. then that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about going from, you know, growing up, when were you first known for being funny? Um... I don't, I always had, a, I, I grew up mostly with my dad, so he always had a good sense of humor, um, and we come from, we have a lot of, you know, I don't know if I can cuss, but bull crap, you know, in our family, and um, it's just a lot of times easier to laugh it off than it is to dwell on it, so we were always really good at that, and plus, I was a chubby kid in school, so it always helped to have a little bit of personality, Yeah. You know? uh, so I got through that way, Um so yeah, I think I always, I always tried to be funny since a kid. I just enjoyed it. Me I just too. liked being silly for the most part. There was enough people that were serious. You know, yeah. te teachers, parents. Right. It's like, this Need is my time to let loose. <laughs> they got enough straight answers out of other people. It was time for some levity with us. Yeah. <laughs> so who was, who were some of the people as you were young and growing up that said, you know what, you're funny. Did anybody come along and say, you're funny, you should try comedy as a young person? No, but that's how I thought it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I, I, had, I, I just had no idea that this was even an option. My dog has got her toy. As it was even an option for me. I had no clue. I thought somebody saw you on the street and you were just lucky and they said, hey, you know what, you're funny, come with me. Um, so I had no clue that it was even, I just, comedy, it's so, it wasn't like it was back, you know, like it is today. Like I can go to my hometown now and probably find an open mic, which is ridiculous. I live in a town that's less than, I think now I looked it up uh, not long ago. It's like just under 5,000 people and it was less than that when I was there. So there's no way. Wow. So when you're, you've done acting, you've got credits out the kazoo of uh, being in, on TV and you've got movies and stuff like that, you know, and I like, I can't even talk about it. I get tongue tied, <laughs> but like, how did you go from being, you know, Jessica Wellington in North Carolina to somebody in Hollywood and on stages with Liza Schles opening for Liza Schlesinger. How did that happen? This is a good question. I wish I knew. I, <laughs> I, 
I don't know. Like, uh, it's funny because when I was a kid, I used to always, like when I was three and, and toddler and all that, we have a ton of pictures of me. I like to play dress up and I put on my grandma's heels and wear pearls and, and uh, her purse and all that and carry it around. And they used to call me Hollywood, you know? And then when I would get angry as a, a you know, like a 10, 11 year old, I used to always say that I was going to go to school far, far away in California. <laughs> Now that didn't work out right away. I went in the military, but it's funny how things eventually come back around. And I moved, honestly, I moved to California just to help a friend out. And that's where I, I saw, I went to a comedy club and realized that they had open mic and improv classes. And I'm like, you mean anybody can do this? Wow. Yeah, I honestly had, I had no clue. I wasn't listening to podcasts or any of that at the time. I think that was pretty new. Like, I just, I had no clue. There's so much information out there for people now. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. You can, I can, I can get all trained in, in my living room, you know, how to do this yeah. all and then step on stage, not with a lot of shortcuts, but with some really good training behind me. Yeah. You know, my first comedy show was actually in Vegas. I was stationed in Vegas for four years. What? At Nellis. Yeah, Nellis. Um, mm. I was there for four years and my first comedy show ever they gave us free tickets uh, was to see Dennis Miller at the Caesars Palace. Wow, that's so cool. How did you like seeing him? Um, I really enjoyed it. If I, I hate admitting this every time, but uh, I heckled. <laughs> I want to hear. So, it's so embarrassing. It's so, I don't even remember what I said, but I used to just respond to the jokes and I'm thinking I'm making them funnier, you know, and it was horrible, I'm sure. You know? <laughs> but luckily, I was up like in the balcony, so it didn't, you know, mess up the show. But I just, I had no clue. Quick story. Uh, the very first time I was thinking seriously about going on stage, I was watching an open mic. And a guy was bombing so badly. And his inside voice was coming out to the microphone. And he was like, I think I'll go home and kill myself. And the <laughs> place was silent so i said ah oh, hell just make fun of us jews <laughs> and the, the place erupted and i'm like why am i in the audience <laughs> right so that's how you got started was just watching a show too and just because like one one day my, i was there with my daughter and then like a month later my daughter said you know what i've had enough of being your daughter i think i want my own life and we haven't spoken six years and I knew it was going to be that way because I know my daughter and our relationship. I got hit by a drunk driver. I had brain trauma. She had to take care of me. Oh, it's a whole thing. And it was too much for her, right? Wow, and so I'm giving awesome. her her space. But that day I called Ace's Comedy Club in Marietta and said, look, you want to save my life? Get me on stage. I mean today. So that's the day I decided to do something with my funny bone to live. That's amazing. What an inspiring story. Yeah, like, isn't it funny that? too? <laughs> well, that's Hard the beauty to... of this is that we get to take all of our tragedies and, and laugh at them and say, isn't it stupid to be human? It's so stupid. What it are we is. doing? I know. Oh my gosh. So you got on stage that very first time. You went to classes and then got on stage or you did yeah. a side? Yeah. Um, Trying to get this squeaky away. Who gets to say that they taught you comedy? Who's that uh, lucky stiff? That's Brian Crawl. I have the tattoo of the I can't get it of the first uh, comedy club that I started at. Um, he's a he's a great guy. I ended up managing the club. Um, I actually started with improv. I started with improv classes. I did that. Um, I didn't think I was too horrible, but once I found stand up, I was like, oh, this is it. This is. I guess it's kind of selfish because you're like, oh, I can do this all by myself, make them laugh all by myself, and it's all mine, you know? <laughs> Don't have to share any glory with nobody. Nobody can pull you down. <laughs> no. Yeah, but uh, you fail on your own too. You you learn that quickly. But um, yeah, I, I always, I'll always have a love for improv. I, I still wish I was doing it, um, you know, at least in my spare time or something because I, I think it's good for everybody just to keep juices going and flowing and keep your creativity going you know yes so which did you do first i got lost in my brain 
I started you, with improv. Okay. So what were some funny experiences with improv or early comedy for you? Do you have any funny stories? Well, one time um, I did what they called strip prov. Mm-hmm. which is <laughs> sounds, you know, you know how to strip, strip poker, but in it, strip improv, you wear clothes. And then if you ask a question, like you have to lose a piece of clothing every five minutes, you lose a piece of clothing, all this. And these burlesque girls at the club had taught me how to do the, the tassels, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. And I was so excited to show off that I could do that, that <laughs> almost immediately I took off my shirt and I had to do the whole show just in tassels. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting uh, skill to have, to be able to make those tassels go. <laughs> yeah, I found out that if you have big boobs, though, it's not that hard. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd fail. Because I'm sitting there topless and I had wore all these little tiny hats. I had like a little tiny hat and then a little a tinier, a little bit bigger, a little, and all these hats and everybody's watching me. They're laughing because it's like, she's already topless, but she had all these hats on. What is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you first got up on your own doing comedy on stage, were you nervous or scared? I, you know, that is something that I did know from a young age is that I always loved, I loved the stage. I had, I was in 4-H for years, but I always did the public speaking contest and I always did really well. And then when I was in um, sixth grade, I ran for assistant secretary of the school. I did nothing. I won. I did nothing with it. I only wanted to do the speech. Uh, and it was the time during the OJ trial. So my, my, my ending line was, if you don't object, you must elect Jessica <laughs> Ellington. You know, so I got a big standing ovation and I was like, that's all I needed. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a freshman in high school, I ran for secretary too. And I stole a line off, leave it to Beaver, like anyone knows what that is. Now they think it's a porn site. And so I, got, <laughs> I took this line that said, vote for me. And everybody was doing these long-winded speeches. I just got up there and said, vote for me. And when I went on my merry way and won. <laughs> <laughs> I hate like you always had a, you always had like a love though for the stage and we just didn't know it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I did a, um, in the Air Force, I did a, a speech class. Cause again, I knew it was just gonna be fun. And I was like, okay, here's a little credit. And, uh, the first speech I did was a demonstration speech and the teacher made us give us the, give her the subject first. She thought I, I told her I was going to do a speech on how to shave a beaver. Okay. This woman thought I was so backwoods that I was literally going to show the class how to shave a real beaver. And of course it was all just, you know, uh, puns. Uh, trying to, you know, and it was fun and she enjoyed it, but she was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I really thought you were going to, shave a beaver (laughs) in the army i had one one one-liner in three years my lieutenant every time i i was one woman in 1973 in germany among 2000 men so even though i was a whack all day long it was like they wanted a whack at me and this lieutenant i walked in the office anytime he'd say they call me the 60 minute man and all the guys would laugh at my expense. So one day, just one day I got the nerve with my one liner and I didn't even plan it. I just said, what, to get it up? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I know how you feel. Like when I was in the military, I was ammo. So I was in a very male dominated career field and it's, it's rough. You got to try to, you got to get those one-liners in. You do. Like usually the one-liners are like, go, go, go F off <laughs> all day long. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. You know, it's crazy. Uh, Cause like I was not that girl in school, high school or college that anybody said, oh, now that's the girl I want. But you put me in Germany among 2000 men, all of a sudden I'm Kim Kardashian. Yeah. That was- <laughs> just didn't seem real you know <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So do you, do you have other funny stories from your military experience? Hmm. You know, do you remember a lot of them? I mean, I because I'm honestly like I don't think I have a good memory because there's a lot of shit that happened and I just I don't oh, remember. Okay. And I know we drank a lot, but <laughs> a lot. I, if I, I had the money back from all the drinking, man. Could buy I a new know. liver. <laughs> oh, I mean, I remember one time the guys set a couch on fire in the dorms and threw it off the balcony. <laughs> I remember that. We had a guy from Indiana cleaning an engine in his bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> we had a guy that tied a rope around his neck and jumped out a window, but he didn't tie the rope the right length and he broke both ankles. For oh. some crazy reason, I thought that was so funny back then, you know? Oh my God, you're sick, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, this one girl got uh, raped 13 times in basic training but they didn't weed her out of the riprap and sent her to be the second woman among 2000 men like that makes sense. So she would sleep underneath the captain's desk every night. She was too afraid to go back to the barracks. That and, is horrible. Yeah, horrible. She could type like 300 words a minute or something crazy, but she would type and then she would be talking into thin air. I mean, she had literally lost her mind from the trauma. Wow. Yeah. So it wasn't all fun in games, but you know, you have to find a way to make it funny. Yeah, you do. Yeah. That's rough. And sometimes. Fucking VA. Did you, when you were in the military, did you run across anybody you'd known before going into the Air Force? I don't think so. <laughs> I was in Germany just handling paper in a finance department. All of a sudden it said, Dennis, and I, whatever his last name was. And I go, this, I had one of these in my high school. So I look at the same address. I'm like, holy Toledo. So I'm waiting for him and he comes through to get his money. And I go, do you remember me? And he goes, oh, you know, and he, he asked me out, but I was engaged at the time. And so I had to pass on that would have been the only guy that ever asked me out from my high school, too. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did ask you out. You can't take that away from it. That's so they did. You got to turn down. You got to turn it down. That's even better. <laughs> better story. <laughs> Get even, finally. Right. I do remember, uh, I don't know if you know, in, in North Carolina, my dad is really into it. He, there's a dance that they call uh, shagging. He yeah. does a lot of competitions, all that. And they do it to beach music. Well, he came to visit me uh, when I was in England. And he brought this T-shirt that he wanted to wear that said, Sugarfoot Shag Club. <laughs> and on the back, it said, we do it for fun. And I was like, Dad, you can't wear that here. Unless, I mean, you can, but it means something completely different. Nobody knows about the dance of shag. In England. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you live on the economy in England or did you live on a base? For the first year or so, I lived on base in, uh, in the dorms. And then I did move out to a pretty nice apartment. I really missed it. It was like three bedroom, two baths. That's like one of the biggest apartments I've had. Yeah. Wow. What was it like being in the UK? over there in the UK as an American citizen I, in the military. <laughs> I ended up loving England so much. I, it was so fun and just to be able to explore and all the history there. The only thing that is sucks about England is the weather. The weather is horrible and gloomy all the time. It took me months just to get used to that because I'd be like, oh, well, it's drizzling outside. I guess I'll stay in and you soon learn that you're never going to go out then, you know? <laughs> uh, so that's the only thing, but I went to, also went to Paris for like two weeks on vacation while I was there. I wish I had more time because I wanted to go to Greece and hopefully one day I'll still do that. But just being in Europe and overseas was amazing. And I tried so hard to stay overseas, but I was too late on my dream sheet and uh, they sent me to Nellis. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like being at Nellis? 
because then you'd have a lot of action in the city. Yeah, there's you do have Vegas, but I will say Nellis is the base is such a it feels like such a high profile base and it's got all the training and all that. And we did we had such long shifts all the time. It was just it was rough. I didn't really like they make you work long shifts longer than eight hours. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We got on we were on twelve hour shifts regular there. And that it just sucked. But I did um when I was in Vegas, I ended up meeting a guy that was uh, military retired and he owned a dj business and i ended up djing weddings part-time and that was the most fun wow. that got me on the mic uh really for the first time uh, and being really comfortable on it and we did like these auditions uh and he said that's the why i decided to to hire and train you because you were just so comfortable and easy on the microphone um it was still old school, you know, CDs and all that. And it, I didn't get tech, you know, too high tech, but I could do the mic and, you know, do the first dance and the cake cutting. And I was good at that stuff, you know? Uh, so I really enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed that when I was in, in Nellis. What's your favorite experience in a movie and on stage doing comedy? Like some, that those moments you won't ever forget. Well, I'll never forget. Now, going in to do Grace and Frankie, I was so excited. And I, I love them both to death, both uh, Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda, you know. But there was something about Lily. I thought, you know, we're, you know, you get all these wild ideas in your mind. And I'm like, you know what? I think we're really going to connect, you know. Like, I can really see us being pals and going for a drink after this, you know. <laughs> I was like, she's going to love me, right? And What's we, not to love? <laughs> not that she didn't like me. We had a great time. We had a great conversation. But it ended up being Jane um, because I was playing a, a SIM card dealer. And it, originally it was supposed to be a drug dealer. And I told her about how my mom was a crackhead and all this stuff. And I'm not even thinking, like, oh, this is sad. You know what I mean? You know? <laughs> I'm just like, oh, yeah, this is normal, right? Well, she my ended up loving me so much and she gave me a big kiss before i left and i was like wow i just it blew my mind i didn't it just never dawned on me like oh she feels sorry for me <laughs> <laughs> my parents went through the holocaust you know and i i tell it like it's you know thin air you know it's like, yeah my parents went through the whole blah 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 and I look at people and they're like in a funk. <laughs> and I, I'm just saying it like yeah. it's apples and oranges, whatever. You know, your parents were plumbers. Oh, mine went through the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Linda and the hanging man, isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Debbie Downer. <laughs> I can bring any party down. <laughs> you think you have problems. <laughs> anyway, they put me in a city in Germany called Hanau. Turns out that that's where the Grimm brothers are from. Okay. And my grandmother, who died in Minsk concentration camp, was born there. So who's Grimmer? I think we're winning. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Things you can't say on stage, you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We have to laugh at all our pain or we'll die. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have to. So who have been some people in the comedy scene that have helped you get to where you're at by encouraging you or that you want to shout out to? Um, well, first off would definitely be Eliza because she was like one of the first ones to let me feature for her. And um, she took me to Vegas. So we got to do that. Was it Ace inside the Mirage? Um, which was an amazing experience. Uh, Russell Peters has been really good to me. He's such a great guy. Joey Diaz has been an amazing guy. Whitney Cummings, she, Burt Kreischer. I mean, there's so many. Uh, you, you know how it is in this business. You can't make it without other people. You yeah. know, they have to be there to help you. And working at the comedy store, I've met so many great comics that even if they haven't, you know, let me feature or whatever they've let me pick their ear or pick their brain and oh, what an opportunity you know yes you work at the comedy store and your bio said you're the doorman there or one of the yeah, doormen. i was the first female door guy wow <laughs> so 
Holy Toledo, the Air Force comes back to help you. Yeah, it did. I knew, I was like, I know how to check IDs. Step back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see your dog. I want to see oh, what dog you have. I'm now. I'm not, there's no way I'm going to be able to catch her. And I'm not wearing pants, so I'm not <laughs> sticking up. What kind of dog do you have, Jessica? Uh, she has a chug. So she's a, a pug chihuahua mix. Oh, I bet she's adorable. She so what? So how many years have you been at the comedy store? Um, two years, two and a half years. Maybe um, going on three now. I have there know. been any crazy scenarios that have happened there without telling names of who it involved, but there's got to be funny stuff that's gone down at the comedy oh, store. There's so much fun stuff and so many stories. Like, uh, I know Dennis Rodman came in one night and he heckled and got kicked out and didn't pay for his meal. Uh, that was, I'll never forget that. Um, you know, it's fucking Dennis Rodman. Um, one night, uh, let's see. Oh, I just forgot. Busta Rhymes. I keep always forgetting. Busta, Busta Rhymes kissed me one night. When oh I was my in gosh. There. I was like, this is weird. I thought he was going to kill me. Uh, <laughs> he's a big dude <laughs> you know i giggle so much when he's doing his rap his rap makes me giggle it's so fast oh. <laughs> it's the speed makes me giggle i don't know what's wrong with me i would love to meet him that must have been cool it was it was funny it was you know dave Chappelle was on stage i'm working the door <clears throat> and uh, Dave lit up a cigarette and we can allow that because it's on stage it's like a, a performance thing uh, but then in the back of the room Buster Rhymes lit up a cigarette and I didn't you know I'm not like oh that's Buster Rhymes I'm not going to say anything <laughs> so I, I tapped him on the shoulder and I was like I'm sorry you can't smoke in here and he turned around and grabbed me by the shoulders and I thought he stared at me and I thought oh my god this guy's about to kill me Right? And then he just gave me a big smooch and left. And oh. I was like, whoo! <laughs> wow. That's a moment. Holy Toledo. So some of the women that have come through, I like giving women in comedy a voice. I mean, you know, like speaking of them, because men get a lot of attention in, the, in comedy, as we know. Tell me about some really cool things with Liza and other women that you've met. Um, oh, they're so good. Nikki Glazer too. I can't. She's been amazing and had me on her XM show, and I've gotten to open for her in Sacramento. Um, and I'll say too, Nikki is one of those people. It's so weird that you can just open up to. Like I told her things. We ended up having conversations in the green room that I had not told anyone. Wow. You know. Um. So not only is she a great stand-up and a, a great comedian because she is a great person um i'll never forget that i'll never and, and i don't know if she really realizes how much that means to me i have body chills just hearing this that's so cool it's it, it honestly i i don't know it she's just great yeah i mean in so many women <clears throat> if we we have to help each other out in this business or it's just not going to go down. And you know how, I know it's a stereotype, but women, we like to bicker with each other. And we yes. got to get through that and be like, even if we bicker, screw it. You know, it's still another woman in comedy. We have to learn how to support them and, and help them out, you know? Yes, absolutely. Um, so do you, what's going on with the in, in LA right now, are there any hopes of reopening the city? And what plans do you have as soon as this all ends? Do you have some things in the works that you want to mention that are going to be um, going down for you? I do know that I, I wish I had the date with me right now. Um, I'll be doing an online show with Ngaio Bilum um, that should be pretty fun. He's a, a great stand-up. He's He was on uh, Netflix's uh, Cooking on High. Uh, yes, as, as the weed expert, so he he's hilarious. He does so many weed festivals and stuff because he's he's just so funny. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that. So look for that next month. Um, What's the name of the show? 
Ugh, I don't even have my phone. I wish that's could... okay. That's okay. I got the. But I, I'll be posting about it. Okay. For sure, I'll be posting. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's the only thing really. I got shaking at the moment. I did go do a weekend in Sacramento recently, and I did a one nighter in Arizona. Uh, I'd love to do some more live gigs. So if there's any clubs that are open, I'm free. <laughs> wow, super cool. In the course of a year before the pandemic, how often in a year did you get to Vegas? I can't wait to see you in person and watch your comedy. Um, honestly, I've only been there a couple times. I know I did one night. I did a biker bar. Um, it was for this this weed show, uh, the Gateway Show. And it was a lot of fun. It was a little different, a little scary at first, all those bikes but, uh, <laughs> and bikers. But it was a good time. Uh, and then I did the Mirage with... Uh, with Eliza, which was like, come on, opposites, going from a biker bar and then getting to stay in a suite with a big tub. And I was like, this is weird. How many people are in the audience at the Mirage? Um, I think that night we had like six or 700. Wow. It's crazy. That was the biggest crowd of, yeah, it was crazy. That's so great. Oh my gosh. Do you do podcasts and like, where can people follow you to make you even more famous? Please follow me at Jess Wellington 2 on everything across the board. I do have a podcast with Felicia Michaels uh, called The Liars Club. We have two comics come on. They both tell two stories each. One's true, one's a lie. And along with our audience, we try to uh, debunk uh, the lie. So it's really fun. It's interactive. Come play along with us. We'd love to have you. We're on YouTube and anywhere that you stream uh, podcasts. That's super cool. I would win that because I was raised to lie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we'll definitely get you on so we can have some, you know, good old Holocaust stories, you know? <laughs> they are so cool. You have no idea. <laughs> People need to do that, you know? I don't know what their problem is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I got places for people to follow you. You came on and that's so nice of you to be here today. What would you like to tell people? Because you see the world through a comic's eye and you're good at acting. So how can people act or fake it to make it through the rest of this pandemic, brand new experience we've never had before? Because who knows how much longer this will last? I don't know if fake it to make it. It's pretty hard because I'm pretty close to cracking myself, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I'm doing this? <laughs> Like as much as I love that we have Zoom to connect, oh, ha, ha. I'm so happy <laughs> talking to people through this. Like I, I, I'm so happy it's here. It's a great platform for us to use, but I just want to see people in person so no, bad. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You try to stay happy. Watch something. I don't know. Just try and laugh every day at least once. And watch your on Frankie and Grace, please. And our podcast, The Liars Club, right? Yes. With yes. Alicia Michaels. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I met you at Dante, Russia Lelly, and Rebecca Koken's The Portland Comedy Festival 2019. And I thought you were so dope that night, but it's a little bit starstruck. I'm not going to lie. So Aww. I stayed back. And then I thought, what the heck? I'll. I'll invite you on and see if you're cool and you're so cool thank you Aww. so much thank and you we'll thank you linda i really had a good time it was really nice talking to you thank you <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye love bye. you bye. lot Everybody's